Hi friends, I was browsing through my games library and I asked myself, what is Dandera? We're going to be taking a look at the Trials of Fear edition here, which has more dialogue and more world building. Published the 6th of February 2018 by Raw Fury, Dandera was created by Long Hat House. Long Hat House is a two-man game studio based in Brazil, founded in 2014 by two computer science students, Lucas and Joao. These two have a love for video games and participated in many a game jam while studying together. They currently have one other full-time release under their belt called Magenta Arcade, but for some reason it's only available on the Amazon App Store. Dandera is available on almost everything, including mobile. It was also one of the first indie games announced for the Nintendo Switch. After doing more research, I discovered that Dandera is based on the life of a historical figure. Dandera was a freedom fighter in the 1600s, fighting against slavery and helping to protect Afro-Brazilians and the people of Palmeiras from the Dutch invasion in the 1630s. This game is a beautiful blend of Metroidvania, pixel art, and gravity defiance. Let's get into it, and I'll show you what I mean. You are Dandera, born in the crib of creation during a turbulent time within the salt. The salt is a force which flows through the world of disorientating gravity. Up is just a concept as the world is constantly turning. The salt is in trouble and it has been cursed by greed and oppression. It is up to Dandera to save it. There is no walking or running in this game. Want to walk over there? Check something out? Nope. There is only jump. You can leap to any surface that has this white salt coating. You and the salt are one. It took me quite a while to adjust to how the movement works. Once you get the hang of it though, you'll be moving through scenes like a comet, blasting enemies and dodging attacks. You can only move in a straight line from where you are to where you want to go. Your jump is very short and you will find yourself bouncing around back and forth a lot. It feels quite amazing. If you get hit, you will become unstuck from the salt and will float wherever you got hit and have very few invincibility frames to deal with the threat or get back to the ground. Rooms can shift and spin as you progress through them. The way you left one room doesn't mean you will be facing the same way in the next, making navigation slightly difficult. I found myself more than once checking the map and double checking to make sure I was heading to the right exit that I wanted. It can be quite disorientating. Destroying boxes, opening some chests, and defeating enemies gives you salt. Salt is used as a currency to upgrade your skills. Now when you find a camp, your sodium intake might be slightly high. Drink some water, quench your thirst, take a break, and save your progress. At camp, you can also upgrade your abilities. When you use the camp, your consumables and health will be refreshed, but every enemy you have dispatched thus far will respawn. This is also the area where you will respawn when you die, minus all of your salt. The higher your level, the more salt you will need to upgrade your skills. This may make you salty, or not salty, because you don't have any salt, and yet you have all of the salt. When you die, and you will, finding your body will return to you the salt that you lost. Salt is love. Salt is life. There are a lot of little tidbits of lore scattered about the world. Some of them might be cryptic, and some of them just don't make any sense, and some of them are... Some do make sense. Some areas can only be opened up once you've talked to specific NPCs. These particular platforms can only be moved after talking to the correct NPC who reactivates them. Some bosses, mini bosses, or NPCs such as Johnny here will give you a sub weapon. This one in particular is the Johnny B Rocket and can destroy these stone walls and enemies alike. Each sub weapon uses energy which can be replenished at a camp. So far, from what I can tell, every area has a boss. Each boss is a unique battle or set of challenges that you must defeat in order to progress. As I said before, some bosses will give you a sub weapon and some will give you a key artifact needed to progress in the game. Defeating the first boss here will grant you the Stone of Creation, which will allow you to jump from these green altars and go further than you would normally be able to. Once you've progressed through the game, the challenge level rises sharply. My save file is about 5 hours in due to my extreme lack of skill in platforming games and it's caught in quite difficult. Dandera is a game of timing. Since you can't move, you have to time your jumps between obstacles and enemies. Some of these areas are downright evil in how good your timing needs to be. Some of these traps and enemies take away more than just one hard on hit and you will quickly find yourself back at camp. Now I have no idea how far into the game I am. I think that at 5 hours I might be a quarter of the way through. This is truly a Metroidvania game in every sense. I've been up and down passages only to find my way blocked by something I cannot deal with. 
There are all kinds of walls and doors that you need sub weapons and artifacts for, and that makes me want to continue to play this game until I can get through these areas and find out what's in there. The sound design in this game is amazing. All your movements have weight to them, your attacks are punchy and feel great to use, and the animations add to all of this. The music, when there is any, is on par with the rest of the sound design. It fits so well and just builds on this incredible world. I recommend that any Metroidvania fan play this game. And now, you know what Dandera is. Let's take a look at the options menu. This game is made in Unity and is a pixel art game. While it is beautiful, it has very few quality options and other options. We have separate volume sliders for sound and music, a variety of languages for whatever you're speaking, and in the more options, we have, uh, we're pretty low on any options. We have only three options in here. We have low graphics on or off, V-Sync on or off, and vibration on or off. You will notice the extreme lack of any key rebinding or gamepad options. No rebinds whatsoever. If you enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed playing Dandera, then hit subscribe and let me know what your favorite Metroidvania game is. If you want to check another video, check out my video on Barony. It's a roguelike dungeon crawler in a pixel art style. It's really cool. You'll enjoy it.